Hi, I am Cynthia Jordan, and I am a breast cancer survivor, stage 2B. Um, and I am passionate about hiking and educating women about their breast health. And I love golden doodles and biking and tennis. And um, I'd say I'm a pretty positive person despite it all, <laughs> you know? I got normal mammograms for 13 years and had no sign or symptom that I was walking around with a walnut-sized tumor. Well, I mean, I got letters that said, you know, I had got a normal mammogram and it said with dense breasts and I, you know, this is how uneducated and stupid I felt. I was like, well, at least they're not fat. And I just went on my merry way. And I had no idea that I was walking around with some sort of bit of a ticking time bomb uh, because of the lack of education. And I think that what's happening nowadays is even women like myself who are getting normal mammograms, because gosh, there's so many that aren't, are not educated to turn to their gynecologist and say, you know, I got this note, you know, it says dense breast. What does this mean? Nobody's, nobody even sat down and educated me and said, okay, you have dense breast, you need supplemental screening. So I had a walnut sized tumor that was missed for possibly five years. I mean, it's, it's and I'm not special. No, I, I had no idea. It was walnut size, 3.7 centimeters. And I, I was not aware that I was hiking and biking and living my life so normally uh, that I had a tumor. And that is the scary part about this disease. For many of us, it can be very silent and very painless. Um, it wasn't until I got that letter that said, hey, we see something suspicious, you need to come back. So I have no family history of breast cancer whatsoever. 80 to 85% of women who, who get diagnosed have no family history of breast cancer. That is very high percentage. And many of us, including myself, are walking around thinking, this is not going to happen to me. Can't believe that in 2017, I had a normal mammogram, yet there was a tumor there. Think about that for a second. It's pretty mind blowing. 2018 is when I got diagnosed, but the year prior, so that in this this tumor was hidden, and I never, I never did a self breast check. So even if I did, what am I looking for? And so they called me back, um, and I got the ultrasound. And because the ultrasound technician can't tell you uh, anything, what they're seeing, all I knew was she looked at me and I looked at her and. She gave me a Kleenex and I knew I was on my way to a very difficult time. So that's how I knew. And then got the biopsy and all of that. Um, well, that was the interest interesting thing. My gynecologist was leaving the practice and she was like, oh, good luck. You'll do, you know, whatever. She kind of just, there's another one bites the dust is how I felt. And so then I got, um, I went to get the biopsy within the, you know, the, 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 the cancer, not the cancer center, the gynecologist group, if you will. And they did the biopsy. And then I, they sent me, I actually knew I had breast cancer before I had the biopsy because I was so adamant to ask them. So they pulled up on a screen on a black screen and, and blew up my, the imagery. And I could see that, um, I had, um, they said, you, you know, it's 95% that it's breast cancer. And so I sat there getting a needle, which is very painful. And they're like, you're doing great. And I'm like, you just told me I have breast cancer. Like, so, and so I got diagnosed on 9-11, which was really hard to process because that day is obviously incredibly important to all of us. Um, I think because they showed me on the screen, I was in shock. I did not want to believe it. But then when I, you know, when I go, I mean, once I got the diagnosis, I think it's all the uncertainty of not knowing, you know, how, what stage is it? And do I need chemo? And, you know, all the just anxiety around the word cancer. Uh, so I, I was hysterical. I was screaming, take me to Moffitt, take me to the cancer center that was in my area. You know, I was pretty hysterical. Um, you, you can't process the sounds of those words, there's there's just no way to really, I still to this day can't believe it, to be honest. My story is, you know, because I had small boobs, so nobody was gonna miss them. They thought a lumpec 
a lumpectomy would be silly. You might as well just get them off. And I, I wanted it off. I was like, ah, oh, take it off. And then I, a couple of days later, I called and said, you know, just take them both off. The breast surgeon had said, you shouldn't take off healthy breast tissue. Well, ironically, after the surgery, I had atypical hyperplasia, which means precancerous cells in the healthy breast. So this might've happened again. So she said, good call. Well, basically they just removed them and um, hmm. yeah, I mean, you go to sleep and I think they call it bat wing and they go like this, you know, they strap you in and then you wake up and you're in a corset, like a really tight corset. So, um, and then you have these, and I'm not gonna candy coat it, really disgusting drains that are inside you to drain out any excess fluid. I, through my work at Learn Look Locate, I understand now, you know, what, what that means. You know, the body doesn't know what to do. So this is very foreign. Um, so you wake up in this tight corset and you've got the drains for a couple of weeks and you've got to have somebody help you drain them out. To me, it was just so gross. Um, and then, you know, just the pain, the body is really just healing and trying to figure out what's going on. And one thing that I think, and why I do what I do with Lung Look Locate is to educate women because I felt like there were bugs all over my body. And nobody really also explained that that is called phantom nerve pain. So the body and the nerves are cut. So they don't know what to do. And nobody talked about this. It's like, oh my God, what's happening to me? Well, over time, I now feel somewhat normal. I still feel like even right now, I can feel duct tape. I feel I don't have duct tape on me, but I feel like there's duct tape on my body because the scars, you know, are tight and you can't feel. So if you have an itch, many women will agree with me that you can't feel anything. So it's, um, and then I wound up getting radiation because I did have cancer in my sentinel node, which was a surprise to the doctor as well. It was very small. And so I had 25, quote, well, I guess, rounds of radiation. And till this day, I cannot move this arm any further than this. This won't move. So the stiffness is very painful. And I did develop a severe skin allergy. I am now severely allergic to anything that has fragrance. And this has never happened to me in my lifetime. So if, if, if perfume gets on my skin or even like Lysol disinfectant wipes, my body will break out into severe um, sores that are so, so painful that I have, I have to I scratch them almost till they bleed. So it's pretty bad. So I, I'm very fortunate that I did not need chemo, but I will tell you for a lifetime now, I have to be extremely careful. Um, and my whole system got kind of whacked out. So I want anyone who's listening to this to recognize that radiation does Kind of upset the um you know the immune system and so for me this was just like how does this happen and the dermatologist said that you know our bodies develop allergies at, you know at any point in time it doesn't matter and then they're forever which is really sad i mean i had the surgery october 16th and radiation ended at the end of january and and then they checked me a couple times and that's the part most survivors would tell you. And then you're on your way and you're supposed to be normal. It's not so easy. So it's difficult and I'm trying to figure out how to navigate the new normal and your identity. And so, you know, it's just normal follow-ups. You see the breast surgeon and, you know, I'm about four years out. So my goal really is to help inspire people that they can get through this um, and that it's not easy and that, you know, we reach out and try to share our stories so that we feel connected and understood. Mm -hmm. Well, I just don't think people really understand that this is like forever. And because of the work I do, you know, I really live it forever. You have to separate, you need to try to move on. You need to try to not think that reoccurrence could happen. You need to, you know, really thank yourself. And then also look at, you know, maybe some of the positives that have happened. I mean, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. I wouldn't be, you know, the, the, the impact that I'm having on women globally and, and men and doctors and working together to help change this. But survivorship is a mental game in some ways. And I think if you 
have a lot of gratitude, which I do for being alive because there's just so many young people dying. And I don't know why this is happening, but I have survivor's guilt and I feel it's important that every day we are thankful that we're whatever you want to call it, cancer free. Because so many, many people are getting hit with this and it's not our fault. Our bodies just made genes that we didn't know what to do with and they just kept copying them and I, even understanding what that all means. So I'm trying in my survivorship to educate so that we are empowered with the knowledge of understanding this very complex disease. I don't wanna scare people, but I wanna educate them. And I want them to realize that I never felt sick. Now, some cancers, people see symptoms. I had no symptoms and I had no way of really truly knowing. And a ribbon is not awareness. It's just not. And I mean, I love that we have them, but it's not doing the job. And it's time we wake up and realize that when you break down this disease, the layers and the levels of what is going on is, is it's never ending on the good and the bad. I was never informed that I needed additional screening. Um, I was never educated on the risk factors of dense breasts. So I decided to start a global movement myself um, because I feel like this is a piece of the puzzle that is definitely missing. Um, and I had done numerous breast cancer campaigns in my lifetime and felt completely uneducated and unaware of how complex this disease is. And so I started Learn, Look, Locate and it's become somewhat of a global, global movement uh, because it needs to be done um, because Breast cancer in many ways can be silent and painless and misdiagnosed and it's on the rise so much that I just don't think people are aware how, how many people are getting hit with this. So I started this because I couldn't sleep at night saying, wait a second, if I didn't know this, then I bet there's a lot of people that don't know this. So I reached out to many doctors and one of them actually said she carries a small jagged rock about this small, smaller than a dime to show women to feel what a breast cancer tumor could feel like. And that is my aha moment. And I developed a post that shows a dime and a little stone in bright colors and saying, what could a tumor feel like? And I post this often. And then what I did was started just like you guys connecting with patients and sharing stories, because if we don't share our stories, other women aren't gonna understand how the uniqueness and because breast cancer shows up in many different symptoms, you know, pageant's disease needs so much more awareness, inflammatory breast cancer, lobular breast cancer. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And so then working globally to bring people's voices forward and creating a platform and a community for people all over the world to come to, to feel inspired and educated and connected because I felt very alone I learned that it takes up to one to two months for a breast cancer cell to divide. And it takes that, it takes a long time for a tumor to be detected. And that is why, as it's dividing and dividing and dividing, for it to be actually where you can feel it could take a long time. And people need to understand that just because the size of the tumor mine was quite large, that doesn't mean that it's aggressive. It could, but a small tumor could be very aggressive. And so there's a lot of misconception that I want to help people understand the difference between staging and grading. I never thought I'd get out of this very dark place. Um, and it was dark and it was scary. And, you know, I guess the fear goes like this over time, but knowledge is power. And for me, the more I gained the information um, about my disease and my journey, it put me at peace. So that's why I like Learn, Look, Locate, because if you learn, you can feel a little bit more empowered. Don't, don't just let someone tell you you're ER positive and you need this, that, and the other. Get in there and understand it so that you can help know what your treatment is and then connect with people who've been there because they can help you too. So. And honestly, I don't know whoever is watching this, 
I'm just gonna give you a big hug because that's what I needed and say you're not alone. <laughs>